Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today we're going to take a deep dive into Lightroom's new masking. A couple days ago I did a video talking about the new features found in Lightroom and I touched upon the new masking. In that video I mentioned that I was going to do another video where I was going to go into greater depth about the masking. That's what we're going to be doing now. Now if you haven't seen that video or you haven't updated your Lightroom yet, what you'll find once you do update your Lightroom is that the tool panel is slightly different. You still have the crop tool, spot removal tool, red eye reduction tool, but instead of the linear gradient, radial gradient, and brush, you now have this button right here called masking. When you open that up, in there you'll find the brush, linear, and radial gradients, and those work pretty much the same. You'll still have the ability to affect color, luminance, and depth range masks. Um, they work slightly different. We're going to talk about those here as well. But you also have some AI technology now. You have the ability to select the subject in an image and or select the sky in the image. And when you select a subject, it's not just a person you could select. You could select a dog, a cat, an inanimate object like a work of art. Anything that Lightroom thinks is the subject of the image, you should be able to select. Now, in this case, um, I have a strong subject. It's the woman on the rock, rock. And let's select her. So we'll click Select Subject. See, it takes Lightroom to, a minute to think. And you'll see there's a red overlay over what Lightroom thinks is the subject. The subject is the woman, but also included the rocks below her. Now, as far as this overlay is concerned, you have a lot of control over this overlay. By default, as soon as you select the subject or select the sky or you draw you know, a gradient or anything like that, you're going to get this red overlay appear immediately. You don't need to have it red, and you could affect the opacity of the overlay. Um, if you click this little swatch right here, this little square, you can see right here, I could pick any color I want. It comes with a little color picker, right? So I could make that any color I want. If I want to go back to the default red, I could just click right there, and I have the default red. I also could change the opacity. So if you have a like trouble seeing it, you may want to make it more opaque. If it's obscuring what you're actually working on and you want it to be less opaque, of course, you can move it that way as well. You also could affect or you could change what areas of the image it affects. By default, it will be on what is going to be adjusted, meaning as soon as I move sliders, it's going to adjust the woman in the rock. If I want the overlay to show or to be over the parts that won't be adjusted, I could click right here and go to unaffected areas. So my adjustments will still affect the woman in the rock, but it's showing me the overlay on the parts of the image that won't be affected. Also, you don't need to have this type of overlay. For example, if I go to overlay mode, I could still keep that color overlay, but everywhere that won't be affected will be black and white. Below that, I could have a color part of the image. That's the part that will be affected. And everywhere else that isn't in color will be the part that won't be affected. Below that, I could have the image on black. So you could see that the uh, black areas won't be affected. And you can see this is kind of handy. It's showing me that my adjustments are going to affect part of the planet that is off there in the background. Image on white. And white on black. This is actually showing them us a mask view. Uh, so this is good if you really want to see what is being affected. I'll stay to the default color overlay mode. Now, many of these things I just showed you, you could access uh, with these three dots. So you don't have to click on the color swatch. You go to these three dots, and you can see you have all these other options here. Also, when I selected subject and automatically put the red overlay on her, if you don't want it to automatically do that, you could just turn that off right here. Also, you have control over the pins and the tools. This is similar to what it was in the other versions of Lightroom. You could just hit the H key to hide any pins that are in your way or you could come to this menu and have them behave the way you want them to behave. Um, so you have other options you could just experiment with, but I like the default options. They seem to work all right for me. 
Now, as far as these adjustments, let's just say I wanted to make her brighter. That's the whole reason why I wanted to do it. So if I just turn the overlay off for a moment, you can see it's she's a little dark, right? But I don't want to affect the rock that she's standing on. I just want to affect her. So what I could do, I'll have that overlay on, I could subtract from the selection. So click this button right here, and you have a lot of different methods here to use or different tools. I'm just going to use a brush. I'm going to brush away the rock. I don't want my adjustments to affect the rock. So I'm going to click brush. And then we have brush attributes, size of the brush, feathering. I'll keep it relatively hard. The flow and density, I'll keep it 100. I could auto mask it. I could invert it. But I'm just going to come in here and remove the overlay. And this in case, it also any adjustments I do won't be affecting this area. I get a smaller brush by hitting left bracket key. Right bracket key makes it larger. And let's just say I made a mistake and I went oh, like that. I want to put the mask back here. What I could do is hold in the alter option key, alt on a PC option on a Mac, and then I could add this back. All right. And you'll notice you could also just click on the erase brush as well. That's the same thing. As soon as I press in the alter option key, you can see it goes to the erase brush. So we're not actually erasing, we're adding, but you could get the idea, hopefully. All right, so now we're just be affecting the lady. And now, as soon as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to turn overlay off. As soon as I start moving a slider, the overlay will go off. So I brightened her up. There's a little haloing around her hair, so I'll get rid of it up there as well. But, you know, simple, right? Let's try something else. I want to adjust the sky. I could add another mask right on top of this one. Go up here, create new mask, select sky. It takes a second. You can see the red overlay is on the sky. And maybe I want to make the sky a little brighter. So I'll just move this to the right. So you can see how very simple to use these basic masks. Uh, select sky, select person. It can get a little more complicated though. But in, you really bring out the power of this. Um, for this example, let's say that I want to adjust the ground and the man. Um, what I could do is like, I don't want to adjust the sky. Everything else is good. I just want to brighten up the ground and the man himself. So what I could do is I could select the sky, let it select the sky. Now, once it does that right here, where it says sky one, click on those three little dots and invert it. So what it will now do is it will select everything but the sky. So now I could come in and I could brighten up the man and the ground. See, it makes it look a little more. I guess uh, to me it looks a little more natural or a little matches the image a little more. So you could just affect different parts of your image by using the invert button that is found here. Um, one thing I should add too, you could rename all this. If you explore underneath these three dots, if you click there, you could rename. You also could just double click on the word, in this case, sky one, and you'll be able to rename it. Same up here for mask one, double click, and you could rename that. Also, you'll notice there's the three dots there as well. And there's things you could do there. We're going to talk about all these as well. Let's delete this mask for now. All right. Let's say, um, crazy thought. I just want to affect his boots. I don't want to affect the man, the sky, or the ground. What I could do is I could then, let's say, select the subject. And then if I go up to mask one and I click on these three dots, it's also under subject. They're under both. Intersect mask with. That's interesting, right? What you could do is you could have two masks on an image and wherever they overlap is what will be adjusted. For example, I have this simple Venn diagram. I have two circles between the two circles are two different masks where the masks overlap that part in red. That's the only part that will be adjusted when you have these two masks. So I just put a mask on the subject, the man. I want to only affect his boots. So what I could do is go to either one. It doesn't matter. They both do the same thing, the three dots there or the three dots there. And I want to intersect the mask with, it's going to be crazy, a linear gradient. All right. Now, when I do that, I have a gradient tool active. I have a little plus sign for the cursor and I'm going to put the gradient tool upside down, meaning instead of clicking and dragging down, I'm going to click and drag up. And what I'll do is I'll click right around where the top of this boot is and click up. You can see 
I'm kind of got to keep it straight. I'm just not really making it much of a gradient though, so it's going to be kind of scrunched together. But you'll see, let me try to straighten it. I should have held in the shift key. If I held in the shift key, I would have had it perfectly horizontal. All right, but you'll see it's affecting just his boots now. I'll pull it down a little bit. You can see, uh, hopefully, it removed the mask from him and only has it on its boots. So it's like this. Let's say the one, the circle on the left was the subject mask. The, the circle on the right was the linear gradient. Where they overlap is the only part that will be affected. So I could come in here and I don't know, let's say I wanted to brighten up his boots or something silly like that, right? So I could do it like that, see? So that's where that intersect width uh, comes from. Now, your best bet is to kind of experiment with the intersect width and sub subtract. You know, I subtracted the rocks. I could add to this as well. If I wanted to add his pants to this mask, I could click on add and use a brush, let's say, and then come in and try to brush on his pants. But you can see that, you know, stuff like that. So you could get an idea, I think, of how um, you could affect different parts of the image by using subtract, add, and also using this intersect mask width and things like that. So, um, you know, it's, it actually makes it very powerful when you use all these different pieces and you kind of um, jigsaw them together on your image and you'll be able to affect very specific parts of your image. Now, I mentioned that the color masking, luminance masking, and depth masking is slightly different here. Let me try to explain why. Let me go to this image here. In the past, if I wanted to just affect the skin on her face, I would have to put a brush, I would have to brush, let's say, her face. Then I'd be able to go to color range, let's say, and apply or get the mask uh, refined to the skin on her face. So I'd have to use a brush first, or I'd have to use a linear gradient, or I'd have to use a, a radial gradient. You don't have to use a brush linear gradient or radial gradient any longer to be able to use a color range, luminance range, or depth range mask. And by the way, depth range is grayed out because this photo doesn't have any depth info saved into the metadata. Most often you'll have depth range with some cell phone images. When you take images with cell phones, you'll have depth range there. So I want to just affect the skin on her face. There's no masking done on this yet at all. So what I could do is I could jump right down to color range. And as soon as I do, I'll get an eyedropper and I could click on, let's say the skin on her forehead. You'll notice that the mask is just on her skin. Um, if I go here and I increase the opacity, you'll see it's pretty much on her skin. Let's just max it out just for fun. But it is affecting her eye a little bit here, her eye a little bit here. Well, I could get rid of it. I could just click subtract and get a brush and then come in here, get a smaller brush, left bracket key, and then I could subtract it where I don't want it. Like here, it's affecting the middle of her eye a little bit. So I come in and just refine it with the brush. Pretty easy. But then let's say, you know, I'm ready to go. I'll turn the overlay off so you could see. All right, let's say I just wanted to soften her skin so I would go to clarity, right? Turn clarity down, I can make it harsh. But see, you can see it's affecting over here, so I could still get this, this minus over here and remove it from over there and from up in here. And now I think you could better see I'm softening her skin. So the key point I want to make is that the color range, luminance range, and depth range no longer are reliant on you applying a brush linear gradient or radial gradient gradient first. You could jump right down to those and apply those as is. And then on top of that, you have, you know, select subject, select sky. I mean, I could have, theoretically, it would have been a waste of time, but I could have selected subject. So it selects the subject. It didn't select part over here, but who cares? And then I could have um, done an intersection, right? I could have clicked here and intersect mask with a color range and clicked on the skin there. I could have done that, I mean, if I wanted to, but it was extra steps. But I think you'll get the idea. Um, the more you use these, I think they'll be more natural and you may go about 
doing something one way, whereas another photographer will go about doing it slightly differently, but you'll both get the same mask ultimately and be able to adjust that part of the image the way you each want to adjust that part of the image. Uh, so I think that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started using the masks. And um, I think you'll find that it's very powerful and a welcome addition to Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>